So hopefully you've taken the time to watch the videos and think about the three artists that you saw. First, there was Tony Plant, who etches his art into the ground and the stone and the beaches. And he fully appreciates the earth and, and wanting to enhance the beauty of what's there without doing anything to diminish it or destroy it. And then there's Andy Goldsworthy, who uses materials like ice and water and stone and leaves and fully expects that a lot of the art that he creates in places will be destroyed. The earth will um, take it, the ice will melt, the tide will come in. So here's examples of two artists who go through this process of creating, thinking about, planning their art very deliberately, but they know that it's going to go away. The only way that we have any idea about what happened is to capture it with photography or videography. So keep that in mind. And then finally, you heard from or saw a piece by Phil Hansen. And he's a guy who was well known for being a stipple portrait artist. If you remember it all from class, I hate stipple art. It's too precise and tedious for me, but he was really good at it. He did it a lot. And because of how intense the process is, he actually developed some nerve damage in his hand. And after going to see a doctor and getting the bad news that he had developed an uncontrollable, incurable sh shake or tremor in his hand, he kind of stopped making art for a while. He went back to the doctor just to be sure there was nothing they could do to um, get him back to his style that he was known for. And the doctor said, there's really nothing at all I can do. You can min minimize it a little bit, but you really can't make it go away. My advice to you is embrace the shake. So after thinking through that for a while, he decided, you know what, I'm I'm the kind of person who believes that it's important to create and be creative. And he launched this whole new style of making art um, called Goodbye Art. For an entire year, every piece of art that he made was meant to be destroyed, either the tattooed bananas that would eventually rot or um, some sculptures and portraits made of frozen wine or chewed up food or candles that were lighted and then blown out, all kinds of different things that we would never see or experience if not for capturing it with photography or videography. And then you got to see from some of the stuff that you and your classmates made last week. I hope you enjoyed that process. I hope you had a little bit of fun just gathering some stuff from your home. Some of you guys came up with some very, very unique, um, imaginative and beautiful creations just with things you found in your yard or around your house. So the thing I want you to think about as we go back to the question we started with, what's the point of art? There's lots of different ways you could talk about that. There's lots of different things we could consider. But when we consider the three artists that we looked at today and the art that you made last week, I want you to think about what's the point if it's only to make something to get a grade, okay. If it's only to make something for other people to see and love, all right. But if you understand that a very important part of making art is just the process of making the art, being creative and being expressive is a part of who we are, then that's what I was hoping you would understand and maybe start to see through the artists that you saw today and through the art that you made last week. So check out Canvas. There's some questions there you need to answer. I want to hear from you about what you think of all of this. And I hope you guys have a great week. And I look forward to seeing and hearing from you. Thanks.